Hey, what's up? My name is Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We've got Javier Luna. He is an actor, singer, model, and social media influencer with over 12 million followers on his social media platforms. He is bilingual. He uh, is a bilingual actor who has done many TV shows for various networks, including Disney Channel, and Comcast. Javi has recently won the Best Lead Actor at the New York International Film Festival and another one for Best Actor at the Los Angeles Film Festival for his most recent movies, God in Salsa and Somewhere Then. With us right now, Javier Luna. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing great. Very, very great. It's a beautiful day out. I believe winter is officially over. Um, what about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm on my way to Las Vegas, actually. Um, yeah, for a, a NFT festival, you can call it like that. <laughs> I don't know how familiar you are with NFTs, but... No, I am very familiar. Right yeah. So are you going as a, a celebrity? Is this a red carpet? Um. I don't really know what to expect. I just got an invitation and and um and here I go. It's uh it's gonna be great. It's with the Chase Smokers, uh um Kid Leroy. So I'm excited to see that them perform. Yeah. Oh that's that's fantastic. So when are you gonna be here? Because you know I'm in Las Vegas. Oh no way. Yeah, you know that. Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be there in like, I would say, two and a half hours, something like that. And when's the event? Uh, the event is at 8. Tonight? PM. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just going as someone that's going to enjoy the festivities, see what's happening, and, and enjoy, I guess, assume a, a live concert? Uh, yeah, it's kind of, well, a bunch of influencers, we get invited, um, uh, for, I think they, they also want us to be a part of the NFT project. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens, but it's, it's more for, you know, influencers and celebrities. Yeah. So with that, we've got also updated news. You've, uh, got two new, uh, what is it? two awards just recently on top of now you're heading on over to Vegas for this NFT event. Yeah. So tell us yeah. about that. So I recently won a uh, best lead actor at the New York film festival, international film festival um, for God and Salsa. Mm -hmm. That one was a really, really big surprise. Honest, honestly, because I was nominated um, with, another four amazing actors and um i didn't expect to win at all you know they usually don't give the awards to the younger people mm -hmm. but you know i was very lucky to um to get the award it's uh one of my first awards for um as a lead actor and to receive an award also acting in you know, my, my second language, was, which is English, my first language is Spanish. I was very, very surprising. Um, but, you know, I'm really grateful um, for everyone who voted. Yeah, it was amazing. 
Well, I'm not, and I guarantee Marcos Papadatos over there at Digital Journal is not surprised because <laughs> you really are, like, you're breaking through a lot of things, even, like, I didn't even realize, and I'm here in Las Vegas, I had no clue of this event that's happening tonight, and it's like you're coming all the way out here, and in a couple hours, and then boom, at 8 o'clock, you're going right into it for whatever they have for you. Yeah, life is pretty crazy lately. You know, <laughs> running around, going on set, uh, doing promo. It's it's pretty crazy, but you know, I love it. I I love this lifestyle. I love just you know not knowing what I'm gonna do next week and just uh, you know getting surprised by by all these things that are happening. I'm really happy of what's going on in my life right now. When we think about Instagram, when we think about TikTok, you're just going through this like a freight train that has no brakes what is what, what's it done for you in your career Javi especially with TikTok it, have you gotten more auditions are you getting more projects I mean you you're super excelling at a rate that I don't know of many other people that are going in this especially for someone with your stats well, thank you so much. Um, TikTok was definitely a big surprise for me. Uh, I wasn't looking like I didn't. I didn't even know what TikTok was when. It, it's a. It's actually a crazy story. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. Just. Um, so I was at my apartment complex. I just moved uh, to LA, and um, I saw a couple of you know guys do, uh, making videos on their phones with a tripod. And, um, you know, I'm always very curious. So I went to them and I was like, well, what are you guys doing? And they were like, um, so we're, we are doing videos for this new app called TikTok. So one of the, the guys uh, helped me downloading the app and creating a, an account. And I made just one video that night. I was like, oh, I'm not sure about this video. I, this is not my thing. Um, so I almost deleted it. And then I went to sleep and I woke up. And when I woke up, um, uh, he was calling me, the, the guy that helped, helped me out uh, setting, up, setting up my account. And he was like, what's going on with your TikTok? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And I, I thought I got hacked. Um, but what was going on is that that video was at, uh, I think it was like 12 million views overnight and out of nowhere. And I had like 100,000 followers, like literally overnight. When I went to sleep, I had zero. Um, so yeah, it was immediately, I knew that I found something very, very special and I started creating videos every single day for, for, for a couple of years now. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. It's been giving me a lot of opportunities and also a lot of presence, um, in LA, which is a, a hard place to be with so many celebrities and influencers. Um, but, it, but it did make me a name in, on, on TikTok and, and from that, like more in TV and like, uh, movies. So I'm really, you know, it's one of those things that like change your life. <laughs> well, with 10, what I'm looking at here, 10.7 million followers. I can only imagine like I, I'm on TikTok and, you know, I keep it to my area, my arena, but to look at this and what you have. Like, I would love my content to explode, uh, you know, in what you're doing. And it really meets to the fact that you stay in your own lane. You stay uh, to what you know best. You bring yourself authentically forward. Your views are incredible. The interaction is very, very organic. And, um, you know, with this, it's like having a, a mini TV network. That's what it looks like for you is though you have some sort of network here and it's not just to where you're doing TikToks. Like there are some really brilliant videos on here, uh, really good content. But most importantly, as we usually see on social media, I'm going to be honest, I'm not impressed with a lot is people who create content for the hype. You create content that matches who you are as a person. And I believe that's why you're super excelling because I don't see a lot of, I, I actually know, 
nothing here that is like I would consider BS because I'm watching you. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so much as well. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, in most of my videos, I'm just having fun with my friends. And um, yeah, I don't think too much about what I, what I want to post. I just want to, you know, whatever I find funny or, you know, I... I don't know. I hang out every day with my friends and with the people that I work with and we just create fun stuff. And, and I'm glad that, yeah, people, I don't know. I get a lot of comments of people saying like, Oh, this just made my day or I was sad, but now I'm, I'm way happier. And that, that's, that's what's all about, you know, as, as an artist, like I care so much about what the people that follow me um, say and think about my work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I really, I don't know. It, it just makes me so happy that I'm changing. Just even if it's just one person, um, and I'm making them happier. Like, yeah, that so is everything to me. Before all of this, the the recognition, the uh, the awards. What was life like for you? Like, who was Javi Luna before TikTok, before Instagram, <laughs> before film, before awards? Oh, I was a disaster. <laughs> I was, um, I wasn't good in school. Like I, I was definitely not a good student. Um, I did get good grades, but I did get really, really bored about math and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I would have like a lot of arguments with my mom because like she, you know, my brothers are all engineers and I just, I, there was something inside me that I was like, this is just not my thing. And, um, you know, I, I think it's great that, that those classes that I would take, like, like would be so boring to me because I was able to find what truly makes me happy. And, um, yeah, I think that happens to a lot of people, actually, you just need to find what you're good at and what you truly truly enjoy and probably that's your journey you know not necessarily you know go to college and you know do what everybody does just just because your parents want to uh, want you to do it um but uh but you know what truly makes you happy and uh yeah i think before that i was really just trying to find myself and who i was i i found myself a lot of times being misunderstood because I wanted to do different things. And, um, you know, I started dancing. I remember very young, I, I, I painted as well. I played the piano and played the guitar. And, and my friends, um, you know, some of them were like, okay, well, if he likes this, but some, some other ones that they, they truly made fun of me. So, you know, I just, I'm glad that I kept through, you know, all the comments, like, I, I didn't really care that much about all the comments on the, the negativity around me. And I truly went for what made me happy. And, um, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, what, what are the thoughts that go through your, your family and the, the support? What is said to you every day or, you know, maybe not being around? Are there words of encouragement you know, from your parents? Yeah, definitely. Well, that's, that's, that's one of the hardest things is, you know, being, being apart from my family. You know, I, 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 I wish I had my family here, you know, and I could see them every day, but sadly with the whole pandemic and then I, I filmed two movies last year, I haven't been able to see my family in over two years. Um, and my family they're just my biggest support. You know, every time like I get really in my head, um, I just talk to my mom or to my dad and they make me understand that, you know, it's not that big of a deal, you know, and life continues. Um, at first they were, they were very surprised. My mom, not so much because my mom always knew that I was, uh, she always says that I was very extreme. Uh, whenever I was happy, I was the happiest person in the world. And whenever I was sad, mm -hmm. I cried the most, um, you know, out of anyone. But uh, so she wasn't surprised when, when I said that, that I wanted to be an actor. I, uh, she was like, yeah, I, I really, I really, really think this is you, you should do this. 
um, even though she was scared of me not not going to college. Uh, my dad was uh, a little more, you know, it, it took a little longer um, for him to realize that this was my thing. And I remember the first time I said, I want to do this. And my dad was like, if you want to do this, I'm not going to support you or anything, blah, 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 you know, the typical dad thing. Uh, but then I remember the first time that he saw me on TV. That's when everything changed because I, I got on, I got a TV show really fast, like really, really fast in the, within the first couple of, within the first month or a couple of months that I, that I wanted to do this, that I decided that I wanted to do this. And uh, the first time that he saw me on TV, my dad was like, you know what? I was wrong. This is like this, this, you need to do this. And um, yeah. Yeah, I still remember one of the, like that moment, like like very vividly. Or right, what are the most proudest moments? And as you're sharing, I'm thinking to myself because you're extremely young. Uh, what are yeah. the most proudest moments? Is it Disney? Is it are the films? Is it the self uh, realization and happiness of? knowing that you found your purpose, your great, great purpose, that's very different from, you know, your siblings and, and other members of your family that, you know, this is where it worked in your favor and you, you didn't fall into it. It, both of you found each other, your purpose and yourself found each other at its most perfect time. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I have a lot of a lot of moments that I that I felt like, okay, th this is amazing. Um, but I I do remember. I think I think the one moment that changed my life the most was when I when they told me that I was going to be a part of of the cast of Violetta on Disney Channel. I think that's when everything changed because at that time I was working on a TV show in Spain, but it was only Spain. It was a smaller role. And, um, and when I got Violeta, Violeta was already like literally the biggest teenage show in, um, Latin America and Europe. And I would say, honestly, like some other parts of Asia as well. It was huge, huge, huge. And when they told me that I got it, I knew that my life was going to change and it did change completely. It was an international, my first in, international show that was going to be watched by the entire world. And um, it was crazy because I remember when I, when I auditioned for the show, I went against some of my idols in Spain. And I was like, just the fact that I'm in the same room with these actors is crazy to me. But when I got it, I was like, there's, there's just no way. Um, so yeah, that, that was the moment that my life changed the most. And then I am really proud as well that when I came here to LA, I, um, I struggled at first cause I didn't know anybody. I, I didn't have any, any friends or anything and being, you know, speaking another language being from, uh, from Spain and it was hard. It was really hard. Um, but I am really proud of myself that I dreamt it so hard that I, could make it become a reality and I pushed through the hard moments and the, the moments that I felt lonely and I didn't give up and I stayed here and you know now I'm, I'm just so happy are there any other upcoming projects anything that we have to look forward to Javi that you could potentially share that your fans and those that are listening would like to maybe join in or be part of or connect to you with whether it be online or offline? Yeah. Um, I'm working on one project right now that I can't say what it is, but very, very soon people will know it's a, uh, well, I, I really think <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very good project. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then also I'm dropping my, my episodes on somewhere then, uh, that's on my YouTube channel. I recommend everyone to watch it. Uh, it's a project that I created, um, mm -hmm. with a production company here in LA and, and it's just, it's great. It's a psychological thriller. Definitely not what you would expect. It's, uh, it's pretty deep. Um, the, uh, the acting is great. Um, 
and um yeah it's a great project i'm dropping every like a uh, new episode every friday on my youtube channel so you know if you guys want to go check it out you're welcome to <laughs> perfect in addition to these projects these awards uh rights people's rights um are very important to you people having the ability this is a conversation you and i had several weeks ago uh while we were putting all of this together and uh would you like to dive more into that because i remember you telling me that that's something you are very passionate about is people having a voice, people being able to share their goals, their ideas, their expectations, uh, their love for who they are and what they're about without restriction and judgment and limitation. Where does that sit with you now from our last conversation about this? Yeah, it's, uh, I'm very, very passionate about equality. Um, I actually, it's it's funny because I went to an event for for a TV show called Acapulco, and uh, I remember talking to you on the phone. I said like, it just frustrates me a lot that there's so many people in this country that speaks Spanish uh, and they they have an accent, but then when you go on a TV show, they they want they want the Latino, but they they can't have an accent. They they cannot have an accent, and it just blows my mind because there's so many people in this car. It, it just doesn't represent reality. And um, I went to this event uh, for this TV show called Acapulco and the actors had had an accent. And I went to the, um, to the producer of the, show, of the show and I said like, I am so inspired by this. I cannot believe that like, you're one of the few people that would be okay with them having an accent and actually embracing it. And he actually said, this is the only way to make it authentic. And I cannot agree more. Um, there's, in this country, there's so many uh, different races, so many like different cultures. And I think it is really important when people make movies and when people make TV shows to represent reality. And I don't know, I will forever fight for that um, because, you know, I think there's, I think it's just not fair for many people, you know, the way just because, you know, you are the way you are to be treated differently. Um, I just, I, I don't know who can agree with that, but unfortunately there's people that, that act like that and, and it's very sad to me. So I will definitely keep pushing uh, for that and for equality. And we are all humans. We are all the exact same. And we need to be treated equally. If you're able to share, Javi, have you personally ever experienced um, what you shared about because of having an accent, because of being uh, Latino? Or is it that you've seen more of that with colleagues and friends or family members? Yeah, I've, I've seen it many times, many, many, many times. As soon as I, as I speak, um, they, they, you know, the, the people act differently, you know, and, um, and not only with me, like even with other people that are Latinos and that they look, they look different. Like they, they have, you know, darker skin or whatever people really act different, like people do. And that needs to end like right now. And that's so integrated into society that most people don't even realize, but, but it is there. You know, as soon as you see a person that has an accent that, you know, maybe has darker skin, like a lot of people treat them differently. And that's just not fair. Like that needs to stop. And I see a lot of people that, that they're like, yeah, no, you're like, you're right or whatever, but, but they don't take action. And everybody is just as guilty for not taking action as the person, in my opinion, my opinion, this is only my opinion, as the people that are um, uh, just, just, just uh, keeping quiet or, or saying something, you know, something, uh, something bad towards it. I don't know. I, um, yeah, I've, I, I've heard it so many times that I need to get rid of my accent and, and all of that. Um, it's just very frustrating, especially, you know, when many people in this country have an accent 
and they they work so hard so hard for their families and I don't know. it's just sad it makes me really sad do you believe Javi that you've lost opportunities um and connections because of being Latino because of having an accent because of not being the type of person somebody wants you to be and wants you to sound like? Oh, one hundred percent. I I I I've missed so many opportunities for having an accent. I actually, I mean, I've been working with my um, accent coach every every time I I get an audition um, for so long, and it I, I don't know. I hear it all the time. If you like it would be great if you don't have an accent. And I, every single time I think, but but this is who I am. You know, this is who I am, and this is how I express myself. And you know, my friends love me for this. You know, not for something else. And um, I've heard it many times, and I've lost a lot of opportunities for that. Also, um, many agents that I've worked in the past, they they've told me like, "Oh, you look." You look way too, you know. You look way too pretty. You know, like you would be great if you don't. If you look like rougher, I'm like, but this is again who I am. You know, like why? Why don't you try to accept who I am and try to get a job from that? You know, instead of making me different, so I look like everybody else, and then maybe I'll get a job. You know, I just. I just don't understand that perspective and I don't share it and I don't agree with it, but I've definitely lost a lot of opportunities for that. Do you believe all honesty that you will ever meet to the goals and expectations of what people want for you by sounding the way that I sound? I don't, I don't, I have a, um, I would say I sound East coast, but there's a difference to where, you know, someone sounding, you know, you're from another country is your goal to get rid of sounding Latino or do you just not care and you're just going to continue to do the best that you can do? You're going to work with the people that best respect and understand you and on projects that meet to the goals and expectations and not spend the rest of your life worrying about, uh, you know, a voice coach to get you sounding the way other people want you to sound. Yeah, I think I think there's and I hope I really hope there's there's going to be a moment in the industry that that they're going to realize that that there's so many different cultures, you know, and that you know like like um you know Latinos don't need to play the bad role. You know, they can play the the lead role that is uh, you know, I think there's so many walls that we need to break. And I am hoping and I am uh, I have faith that it will happen, that the producers and the people in control are going to wake up and say, here, this is not the reality, you know? Like, we don't need to cast, you know, a uh, different race and different uh, types of characters. You know, everybody can be everything because that is the reality. You know, there's good people and bad people in every single culture every single country, et cetera. And that's a wall that the people in the, in the industry need to break. And I think, I really hope, and I think it will happen. I don't know when, I think some steps are being um, taken. Uh, I do think that it should be faster too. Um, but, but I really, really hope there's gonna be a moment where we're gonna see, you know, beautiful TV shows with, you know, many different cultures and respecting, really, really respecting the cultures and how they are. I, I'm thinking, thinking to myself, like, what to ask you, because it really is a sensitive, sensitive topic and subject. And I don't want to go too deep because um, you really touched on all the most important bullet points when it comes to this. But what does come to my mind is someone that does not look like you, that does not sound like you, that has more of a thicker, intense accent that maybe is darker because you have a very light tone to you, um, which I believe that 
most likely has worked more in your favor. Um, then I'm wondering if you would have been, you know, a lot more tan or Latin looking. What would you say to those people that are darker, more with more of an intense accent, um, who, whether they are in this industry, the entertainment film, TV industry, whether they are TikTok famous or not, or in the hopes of becoming well-recognized and respected within their passion and their craft, what words of encouragement can you say to them? That's 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 actually funny that, that you said that because, uh, you know, another thing that, that that some of the people that I've worked with have told me is like, if you if you want to keep the accent, you you should try to look darker, which is just is a horrible comment. It is a horrible comment. But um, I, I, I don't I don't really know how to encourage these people because I, I you know, like you said, like my, my skin is, is, is lighter. So I don't know how they feel. You know, I cannot uh, step in their shoes, but w what I, what I really want to say is like, um, I hope that the world is going to change. It is changing in some, um, in some areas. And I, really think there will be a bright future um so you know that that's the only thing i can say because you know i i you know i, I don't go through what they have to go through yeah any final thoughts that you would like to share with us and the listeners today on power 98.5 well to whoever is listening um you know I, really to really really encourage uh everyone to love each other no matter no matter uh what color they are or what culture they're they come from or, um you know just we are all one and we are all human beings and you know just just be nice we can always be nice we don't know what the other person is going through so my dad always told me to that being a good person is the most important thing in the world and I do believe in it. So just be a good person. <laughs> you're not only doing it um, or believe in it, but you're doing it at the same time. And I'm truly, truly grateful to have the opportunity to know you, have you as a guest here on Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco. Who would you like to give a shout out to, Javi? Um, well, first of all, to you. So thank you oh, so much you. for having me <laughs> in your space. I really appreciate your time. And... Um, uh, no, I just want to, you know, thank my fans for uh, the unconditional support uh, every single day that I wake up with a bunch of DMs um, of, you know, them just just saying how grateful they are for uh, everything I do. It, it, it means the world to me. So um, I want to thank my fans for everything. Give us your social media handles where everyone can connect to you on TikTok, on Instagram. Where's the best go to to really enjoy who you are, what you're doing in the world and being the best representative for yourself and for other Latinos? Yeah, so they can you guys can follow me at, at Javi Luna everywhere. So it's J-A-V-I-L-U-N-A. Javi, thank you again for being with us here live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. It truly is an honor to have gotten to know you before this interview and during this interview. And you've got to keep me posted. I'm really wanting to attend one of your film premieres if possible. Um, I don't care even if I got to come out to L.A., I'll do it. I mean, you're coming here to Vegas. It's only a four-hour drive, but I will take a plane because uh, I am not into those drives at all. Uh, the <laughs> idea of those areas where there's no civilization really, um, <laughs> it kind of scares me because, you know, it's just desert. And, um, yeah. I don't, I don't like to drive in that, you know, I want to make sure that I can get my gas. And I had a scare years ago of not knowing if I was going to make it or not. Um, cause I was assuming that, uh, there was going to be more, more civilization and there wasn't. So are you flying or driving out today? I'm driving. You're, you're <laughs> doing that four hour straight drive. I am. I, oh, I wow. for some reason, I, yeah, I, I love driving. 
Okay. I, it calls me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep you in positive thought in prayer. And how long are you going to、okay. be staying out here, Javi? I'll stay there until Sunday, I believe.、Yeah. Oh, really? You're going to be here all weekend?、Uh, yes. I'm leaving Sunday morning, like very early in the morning. But,、okay. um, but yeah, the festival is、uh, Friday and Saturday. Awesome. Well, stay on the line. Don't hang up. I definitely want to.、Um, Uh, sort out potentially meeting you if there is time at all. And、uh, I do、yeah. know where Area 15 is, where this event's going to be hosted at. Javi, thank you again. I mean, I'm very, very happy that you're here. I want you back on. Don't be a stranger. Please reach out at any time, whether you have a project, if there's something you want to say, if there's happening,、uh, anything happening in the world at all that's just very much upsetting you. And you're like, you know what? I want to speak out about this. I need to speak up about this, not only for myself, but for other people that don't have the platform and the ability to do what I can do.、Um, you have my permission to do that. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Javi. Wow. I, I mean, what else is there to say about this incredible, young, talented man?、Um, not a kid. He's, he's a very, very much a young, talented guy, actor,、uh, performer.、Uh, you know, Javi Luna. I mean, listen to this over and over again. This is the, the future, our future. And I know there are times that people really have. Said on social media, made negative comments about you know our millennials and Gen Z. But this is our generation. There are hundreds of thousands of people like Javi that are out there and they are making a difference, not talking about it, not complaining about the change that we need and that has to be done. They are taking the power in their hands and they're doing it and they're starting with themselves. So I'm very proud of you, Javi. Thank you to everyone here and all around the world. I'm Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Connect.